Welcome to Biology Access. In today's class, I'll be continuing the invertebrate series on the phylum Platyhermitis. If you know you are new to this channel, please kindly press the subscribe button and put on the notification so that you get notified whenever I post a new video. The, uh, the phylum Platyhermitis is commonly regarded as the flatworms and they comprise of more than 3,000 species of uh, organisms. These phylum are free living or they can be parasitic and they range from very small size to some that are very large in length, such as the tapeworm, which can be several meters. Flatty hermites generally have features or characteristics and they include the fact that they are tripoblastic, that means they possess three germ layer which is actually the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. Though terminologies in various means always varies. We also have the fact that they are parasitic. I've mentioned that before, and they can be free living, depending on the species. The organisms in this group are so virtually flattened. They are actually flattened. That is the reason why they are given the term flat ones and they possess incomplete digestive system. When we say incomplete digestive system, it means they have one opening to the external environment, in which case they have one opening which can be used for injection and for ejection. The organism in this group, they are acolomate. That means they do not possess true body cavity. They do not have body cavity. The spaces between organs are actually occupied by um, parenchymal cells. The diagram of flatter emetis is being displayed on the board and some of these characteristics are being highlighted. They are actually bilaterally symmetrical, which means that they can be cut into two equal heart through a particular plane. So these organisms belong to the organ level of organization. The organism in this group, the platforms generally lack skeletal system, they lack respiratory system, and they also lack circulatory system. Excretion in this organism is usually carried out by the flame cell. Why respiration is usually carried with the aid of what? Diffusion. Flame cells also aid in osmoregulatory um, process in this organism. This organism actually have the ability to regenerate. They possess high regenerative ability, which means that if certain parts, you cut the organism into two, one part will grow the, the other part. They are used in various experiments when you talk about regeneration. The organisms are hermaphrodite when you talk about reproduction, and which implies that a particular organism can possess both the male and the female reproductive organ. They can reproduce sexually, usually through the fusion of gametes, while they can reproduce asexually through um, fusion. As I mentioned earlier, that the organism, if you cut, if a particular uh, segment is being cut off, it can grow. Um, that part that is being cut off can grow it back, which implies that they possess high regenerative ability. Other characteristics of flatty hermitis are actually highlighted on the board. Classification of flatty hermitis. As you are aware, the, the, the flatty hermitis are classified into the following classes. We have the class to Beleria. We have the class Trematoda, and we have the class Monogenia, and the last class, which is Cestoda. The class Tubelaria comprises of the, a free living flatworm. This class is, as a common species, we usually regard as for the Planera. The gathering is being displayed on the blood. They have a very flat, softening body. There are various characteristics. We have it's been displayed in the diagram that you can see on the board. You can know that from the diagram that you have seen that the, the, the flat form have eye spore and various other structure. We also have the microstomon, we have the planocera as other example of the class tubularia. We also have the class trematoda, which are generally regarded as what the fluke or the, the genetic fluke, and they are mainly parasites of vertebrates. These organisms, as you can see from the diagram being displayed on the ball, are leaf-like in shape, or some are cylindrical, with ventral and oral suckers, which with no hook, which you can see 
the diagram of the woman that is doing the story of the boy is showing the suckers. We ha also have the next class, which is the monogenia, which are generally regarded as for the monogenetic fluke. Monogenetic word fluke. And their body is usually leaf like, just like the spermatoda or cylindrical in shape. Also possessing the posterior attachment organ, which is the suckers. This they can possess hook or they can possess clam. In some cases, they can possess one or more of these features. They are generally parasites, especially on gills of or skin of fishes. Example of the monogenetic fluke is being displayed although we have the gyro dactylus, we have the polystoma, we have the dactylogyros as example. So the next class is the class Cestoda. Cestoda is a group that is very common to humans and they are, they are commonly regarded as the tapeworm. The body form actually gave in the nomenclature tapeworm because they are tape-like, possessing the scoles which has hook or suckers, occasionally both for attachment. This organism, their body is often divided into uh, proglottids, as you can see from the diagram being displayed on the board. And they do not possess digestive system. Usually in humans or in organisms which they parasitize, they absorb digested food from the digestive system. An example of this group you can see is the tinea solium, we have the tinea saginata, we, and then we have other uh, species such as the hemenoleptis, then we have the uh, diphilobotrum. Note that these organisms are usually parasites of the digestive system of vertebrates. So we're going to take a typical a representative of the uh, phylum flatulimitis. We're going to look at the planera. Let's take a look at the classification. It's under the class. We have the domain, which is the eukarya. We have the kingdom which is the animalia, we have the phylum, the flatty hermitis, then we have the class the Tubularia, the triclonada, which is the uh, tricladida, which is the other, then we have the family, the planeridae, and the genius, the planera. The organisms that are generally regarded as the planera are organisms that are found in the flan uh, family planeridae, and they are generally aquatic or living in fresh water. We have the some of the species, the, the triclas and the dugesia are typical planera species that usually inhabit the fresh water. They usually live under rocks or leaves between leaves and debris in ponds. However, there are some terrestrial or few terrestrial species which are regarded as well the geoplanidae, and we also have the, the marine species of the planera. Example is given on the board. Now, from the diagram of the planera that you can see on the board, you can see that they are acolomates, which means that they do not possess a true body cavity. They are actually a bilateral, they exhibit bilateral symmetry from the diagram that you can see on the board. We know that these organisms are triploblastic, which means that their body layer have three gem layer, which is the uh, ectoderm, we have the mesoderm, and we have the uh, endoderm. These organisms, as you can see from the diagram being displayed on the board, possess a soft body, which may have a covering that possess cilia. The organism lack respiratory system, they lack skeletal system, they even they lack some of these uh, systems. So they are actually at the organ level of organization, as you can see from the diagram being displayed on the board. Now, this organism, as you can see from the diagram, the nervous system has a eye spot, which is usually used to sense both uh, light and dark reaction. It's not actually used for image formation. The eye spot is used to sense light or if it's darkness, if it is, there is darkness, all right? Now, take note that they also have other nerves arranged in a ladder-like form in this organism. The other characteristics are actually being displayed on the board, you can see that they are hermaphrodites possessing both the male and female organ in one particular organism. We know that these organisms are highly, or they possess high regenerative ability, which means that if you cut certain parts, they can regenerate that part. We also know that this organism exhibits or can carry out sexual reproduction, in which case they possess 
the produce garment which fission leads to formation of what zygote. The carry out the produce larvae they have a complicated life cycle which may involve one or more larvae. Other characteristics of this group is being displayed on the board. I want to take a look at this assignment. Just the way I discuss the genius planera, I want to discuss about this species, the tapeworm, the tinea solium. Classify this organism, discuss about the ecology, the general biology, the anatomy or the structure, and give a general view about the tinea solium. Please send your answers to biologyaccess at gmail.com. Please subscribe to support this channel. Thank you very much.